until the lions have their own historians. The history of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. A significant yet often overlooked fact is the influence of Africa on the religious identity of East Asia. Although East Asian cultures have uniquely shaped their religions, their roots can be traced back to Africa. In this video, we will discover the African essence of ancient Egyptian civilization and learn about vitalism, a religion originating in Africa. It is also important to understand the Mayat philosophy from Africa, the African ancestry of Asia's first inhabitants, and the impact of African traditions on the early Indus Valley civilization. This exploration provides a fresh perspective on the historical interconnections between Africa and East Asia. Be prepared to have your understanding of the world shaken. Little known facts about East Asian religions will be exposed in this video. Our aim is not to sow seeds of discord or claim anyone's culture. Contrary to what some people are willing to accept, we all originated from Africa. If we accept that all humans have their roots in the African continent, why do some people find it repulsive to accept the influence of black Africa on their belief systems? A long time ago, people from East Africa who were black moved to Asia in different groups, starting about 89,000 to 100,000 years ago. The Dravidians, known for their black skin and straight hair, were among these people. They originally came from the Nubian area, which includes parts of South Sudan, Egypt, and Ethiopia. A key figure in their history is Osiris, also called Usire, who is believed to have led the Dravidians from Nubia to what is now India. There, they started the Indus civilization about 4,600 years ago, bringing African culture to this new land. The influence of these African people in Asia was strengthened through trade and politics with Egypt and Nubia until about the third century AD. This long-standing African presence is a big reason why many religious beliefs in East Asia today are similar to those in Africa, like respecting ancestors. Around 3,800 years ago, white people from Eurasia, called Aryans, came and took over the Indus civilization. This led to the creation of Hinduism, which was a mix of the beliefs of these new arrivals and the black Dravidians who were already there. Let's begin with Hinduism. Hinduism has some beliefs that are similar to those of the Dravidians and black Africans. These groups believed in a kind of spirituality that focused on one god, but this god had both feminine and masculine aspects and could appear in different forms. This god, much like in African beliefs, was thought to have brought order from chaos in the early world, creating life and the world itself. The Dravidians, like the Egyptians, also worshipped cows and bulls. They had a social system where people were divided into different groups based on their jobs, but everyone was respected as a human being. Understanding Asian religions also means learning about the African concept known as the Third Way, which plays a key role in these beliefs. Let's take a step back and review some basic comparisons between Egyptians' understanding of the universe and what will become East Asian belief systems. The Egyptians believed that the universe is made of opposing yet balancing elements like good evil, day-night, woman-man, and more. Think of it as the idea of the sun and moon being different but connected. According to Egyptian beliefs, God created these opposing elements from the beginning of time, called Horus and Seth. Similarly, the Fulani people say God made the sun and moon by opening and closing his eyes. Just like the Egyptian pharaoh Ramses III, every person has both these aspects, a lunar and a solar side. The goal is to balance these two and find a third way. This concept of dual nature and the third way can be seen in Egyptian deities like Sekhmet and Bes, who are depicted with two pairs of arms and three heads. The middle pathway, or the third way, can be visualized as a spine with the pelvis at the bottom, or as the respiratory system with two lungs at the base. It's about raising your energy from the lower body to the top, like a snake moving upwards, through practices like meditation and yoga. Ramses, the first, the founder of the 19th dynasty, is shown in a yoga pose. This pose is meant to guide your energy from the bottom to the top of your body. In ancient Egypt, there were various such postures. This idea is the origin of the caduceus, a symbol used in medicine, which was adopted by Western civilizations from ancient Greek and Egyptian cultures. This energy movement is symbolized by a serpent reaching the forehead, 
a reason why pharaohs like Tutankhamun and Amenhotep III are often depicted with a serpent on their forehead. Enlightenment is also represented by a red sun symbol on the forehead between the eyes, often called the third eye. The idea is about reconciling your dual nature back into a unified, divine state. This third way principle was also shared by the Dravidians of the Indus Valley, as seen in depictions of the god Shiva with three faces and in a yoga pose. The Dravidians practiced the totemic cult of the cow and the bull, whose origin is the cult of Hathor, the form of God in Egypt, Mariaman and Krishna, two black and feminine gods, Brahma, god of Hinduism, of white Aryan inspiration, but with two pairs of arms, three heads, and the African sun symbol behind. He has a third eye on his forehead, called Bindi, by Hindus. The Egyptian Dravidian influence is evident here. The famous veneration of the cow in Hinduism, transmitted by the Dravidians, and whose source is the Egyptian cult of Hathor. Let's continue with our dissection of Hinduism. In Hinduism, there's a story about Krishna, a special child, born after a divine message was given to his parents by Vishnu, a major deity. This idea is similar to an Egyptian story where Thoth, a messenger of the god Amen, tells Isis she will have a divine son, Horus, to bring order. This type of story, where a divine child is announced, also appears in Roman writings about the birth of Jesus Christ. There are also similarities between Hindu and Egyptian stories. In Hinduism, there's a tale of Shiva grieving his wife Sati, who is reincarnated as Parvati. In a similar Egyptian story, Osiris is killed, and his grieving wife Isis searches for his body parts, leading to his resurrection. Hindu philosophy emphasizes the importance of Arta, a principle that keeps the world in order. Ignoring Arta would lead to chaos. Similarly, in Egypt, Ma'at is the concept of order, and ignoring it would also lead to chaos. In both cultures, practicing these principles is vital for maintaining balance in the world, and the lotus flower is a shared symbol of fertility. We will now turn our attention to Buddhism. Buddhism was founded by Siddhartha Gautama, believed to have been born around the 6th century BC. While some think he was an Egyptian priest who escaped Persian invasion, the more common belief is that he was born in the Himalayan region of Nepal. One important point often made is that Buddha was black. In China, there's a 2100-year-old site called the Cave of 1000 Buddhas in northern China, and another 1700-year-old cave in Gansu. These places show Buddha with the third eye on his forehead. They also indicate the presence of black kings in that region of China around that time. About three centuries after Gautama's death, Indian Emperor Ashoka helped spread his teachings. Buddha's birth is described as miraculous, similar to the story of Horus in Egyptian mythology, with his mother dreaming of a white elephant announcing the birth of a special child. Buddhism focuses on achieving enlightenment through meditation, controlling breath, and practicing natural goodness, Dharma. Like African vitalism, it's about finding inner balance. Buddhists aim to become enlightened and reach Nirvana. The Buddhist Sutra's 42 articles are compared to the 42 principles of Mahat in Egyptian culture. Buddhist monks' practices resemble those of Egyptian priests, with shaved bodies and linen garments, and their main possessions being a bowl and a dress. Taoism is a spiritual philosophy founded by a man named Lao Tzu, who lived around the same time as Buddha in the 6th century BC. At that time, China had a significant black population. Taoism teaches that the universe was created from a primal energy called qi. From qi emerged yin and yang, which are opposite yet complementary forces found in everything. The first creations from qi were feng, air, and shui, water. The universe operates according to certain laws that bring order and harmony, known as the Tao. This idea is similar to ancient Egyptian beliefs, where the world was created by a god named Imana, using a primal energy called Ra. From Ra came Horo and Sute, Horus and Seth, also opposite and complementary forces. Ra's first creations were Shu, Air, and Tefna, Water, and the laws governing the orderly universe were known as Ma'at. In Taoism, yin and yang represented in the familiar black and white circle, similar to the Egyptian concepts of Sup and Horo. 
The line dividing yin and yang resembles a snake, symbolizing the search for enlightenment, and the circle itself is reminiscent of the sun. Like Ma'at, the Tao is about doing good and living in harmony with the universe. Practicing Tao helps balance yin and yang and leads to self-realization and enlightenment. Taoism also influences architecture. The Chinese practice of Feng Shui aims to align buildings with the universe's order, similar to ancient African architecture. For example, the Great Pyramid in Egypt aligns with the Earth's poles and the Orion constellation, reflecting this harmony with the universe. Taoism, a spiritual philosophy from ancient China, has interesting myths. One such story is about Guan Yu, a grand master who created nine paths, Tao, and dammed nine swamps. The number nine is significant in both Taoism and African spirituality. In African beliefs, the god Imana Ra created eight deities, and together they form a group of nine primary gods. Taoism and African spirituality also share a focus on water as a source of life and the spiral shape, symbolizing how the god Ra moved in the primordial waters at the beginning of time. Now let's talk about Confucianism, another major philosophy from Asia, founded by Kongzu, Confucius, in the 6th century. Confucius aimed to address the disorder and corruption of his time by emphasizing moral values. These include respecting and caring for parents, honoring the authority of leaders, ethical behavior, and venerating ancestors. These principles are very similar to those found in traditional African cultures. So Confucianism can be seen as a philosophy that amplifies and formalizes these vitalist values from Africa. The major spiritual traditions of Asia, including Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism, and Shintoism, are believed to have roots in African spirituality. The deep wisdom found in these Asian practices is thought to be closely linked to Ma'at, an ancient African concept representing truth, balance, and order. It's said that over time, with the influence of Islam and Christianity, the original African understanding of these concepts diminished. Yoga and meditation, which are widely admired and practiced today, are also thought to have originated in Africa. These techniques were developed to help individuals find their inner peace and enlightenment. I hope you learned something new about African spirituality in this video. If you have made it this far into the video, consider clicking the subscribe button and liking the video. Thanks for watching.